Hey everybody! Today we are talking about some goals for 2024 and I have the winner of the iRestore hair laser. So I'll let you guys start coming on. Hello, hello. I'm going to do a little bit of a treatment while we're doing this. Hi everybody! I have the winner of, um, hi, I am Skin Care Girl. I have the winner of the iRestore Essential Hair Laser Cap. I wanna see if I can, if they come on first. So let's just wait a second on that. How is everybody doing? Hi, for craft's sake. Hello, everybody. I'm overdue. Oh my God, I'm so overdue. Hi, Sunny Beast 143 I'm overdue on my radio frequency treatments. So I was gonna do that while we had a little chat. It is the last couple of live shows, the last two live shows of 2023. I cannot believe that it's almost 2024. It's shocking to me, um, but it's not. It's not shocking and I'll tell you why. There's a part of it that's like, oh my God, time flew so fast. And then there's another part when you're working with like, you know, real life goals that you're continually trying to strive for. Time doesn't go as fast as, as it could, you know? Um, or at least the way that the time passes is a little bit more, it's a, it lands a little softer when you know you've got some shit done this year, right? So that's what I wanna talk about. I'm, I'm gonna see first if she comes on. I'm gonna give a couple more minutes before I, hi Dimple Queen. I'm gonna give a couple more minutes before I announce the winner of the Essential. It's not this one, but it's the iRestore Essential device worth $699. Um, happy New Year, happy New Year. So that winner, I'm gonna, gosh, I'm gonna wait and see if she comes on a little bit. Are you guys just on the edge of your seat? Okay, the winner of that is Earth underscore animals underscore family. Crazy, right? I love that handle. That's like everything she must be into. Earth underscore animals underscore family. You have won the iRestore essential hair laser were $699. Hi, New York City. Happy New Year. We're $699. I will reach out to the company and let me get your address and I'll reach out to the company and this will be sent to you directly from the company. Congratulations. That is a giant win. $699. That's a giant win. If you guys missed, yeah. Woo! Yes. Congrats. Congrats. If you guys missed that, um, that live that I did on hair loss, make sure you check that out because there is a ton of information in there. But today, um, because we are the last two lives of 2023, I wanted to kind of hear from you guys, right? I wanted to see what did you guys want um, to talk about in 2024, but also what are some of your New Year's resolutions and how can I help you as a gerontologist and healthy aging co coach, achieve those. So let me know what you, what are you aiming for? Are you aiming for better skin in 2024? Are you aiming to lose some weight in 2024? Um, are you aiming to set some goals um, and maybe go back to school or, you know, various things that people could be wanting to do? I've got my own specific goals that I've been working on, um, and I, but I want to hear from you because. If somebody just says, I want to lose weight, that is like a very broad goal. But if somebody asks me, hey, how do you lose weight? I want to get in there and I want to say, okay, what are you eating for breakfast? Are you intermittent fasting? Um, what's your sugar intake? Are you juicing? All of these various things, right? So if you guys have some goals that you want to talk about, let's not be crude here. If you guys have some goals that you want to talk about, I'm so happy to try to help you fulfill those, okay? So once again, the winner of the iRestore um, Essentials is Earth underscore Animals underscore Family. Congratulations, oh my gosh, I have to block this person. Let me go down, I'm gonna write you down. Come on, let's be a good, per a good human being, right? And not like, just come on and do crude things, okay. This will be the last time we'll see that guy on a live. I can't, I can't block him right now, but I can block him when I get off of here, and we'll do that. So tomorrow is going to be the, yeah, exactly, Debbie, um, need to block. I just can't block him right now, otherwise I'll have to get off of here, but I wrote down his handle, 
and I will block him right afterwards. So, okay, what do you guys set, start a root? Uh, okay, so Creative Eye Candy, who also won the one hour one on one coaching with me, says she wants to start a workout routine with weights at home. Mm, I know exactly what you mean, Creative Candy, and we're gonna work on that when we work on our, when we do our one on one. So, Creative Candy, start a workout routine at home. What I found, what I have found in, in setting goals like this, when it comes with, when you're doing goals like, I wanna start a workout routine. What does that look like, right? What are the steps that are involved in making that happen? Because starting a workout routine is a great thing to say, you know, you're, you're putting that out there in the world, I wanna start a workout routine. But what does that look like and what are the steps and how do you make that specific and measurable and, and achievable? Have you guys ever heard of like those SMART goals? That SMART goal setting, which I think is specific, right? So how is this specific? I wanna start a workout routine at home um, using free weights so many times a week um, because when you do something like that, it becomes measurable, right? You know how many times that you're wanting to do this. It's very specific. It's achievable. It's a realistic goal. So in other words, if you are not, um, some, if you wake up at five o'clock in the morning and you're gone for 16 hours a day, is it achievable for you to do a workout routine at home? Or is that best for you to do on the road? So how achievable is the goal? And is it time bound? So how many times a week are you gonna do it? Because you need to be able to make those checks. So we can talk about that, um, I, the eye candy, we can talk about how do we create this goal for you that you're going to, when it comes time at the end, with this time next year, when we're saying, oh, this is the last two lives of 2024, you will have done and have, you know, really in, embodied this workout routine that you have at home so that it's a part of what you just do, right? It's not something that you're like, oh, I wish I could do this. It's part of your life. What motivates us to get up in the morning and exercise? Um, you know, motivation is, I think sometimes for me, you know, putting the cart before the horse sometimes works. Some, sometimes like if I get up in the morning and I just don't feel like exercising, doing it anyways is, is always, um, I have found about five or 10 minutes into a workout. Have you ever like thought like, God, thank God. I did that. That was such, I'm so glad I worked out. Did anybody, has anybody ever said, gosh, I worked out. That's such a bummer. I wish I wouldn't have done that. Nobody says that, right? You're always glad that you have gotten it done. And so to get out of bed and just have your work, here's a, here's a couple of tips for those of you who know that you need to get out of bed and work out and that's your sequence of events during the day because that's your little tiny window where you can fit it in. Here's a couple of tips that I've used for years. Um, when I first started incorporating, when I first started incorporating a workout routine in the morning and it wasn't like it went against everything that I wanted to do. Um, what I would do is I would lay out my workout clothes at night so I would, I would make sure that when I got up in the morning, I didn't put on regular clothes, I put on workout clothes. And that, it helps to like have your mat ready, have your, your bag packed. If you're going to the gym, have your bag packed, have your, have your workout clothes laid out. Um, and then it's like, you just gotta start it. You just gotta start it. And that first step is always the hardest but if you can get rid of those initial hurdles to begin with, oh, I gotta find something to wear to the gym. I gotta go get my tennis shoes. I have to go get my bag. You know, you're scrambling in the morning. Have all of that stuff done so that you're, you're limiting the number of excuses, right? You're limiting the number of excuses. You're not gonna be as late. You're not gonna be whatever if you just prepare ahead of time. I'm somebody that when I wake up in the morning, if I don't work out in the morning, it's not going to happen. I can do little things throughout. Oh, for craft's sake, that's a good one. I can do little things throughout the day, like leg lifts and squats and things like that. But my main workout has to come in the morning or else it doesn't get done. 
And so I have found laying out my clothes, setting that attention before I go to bed, making sure I know which class am I doing or what am I doing the next morning for my, phys my physicality, for my workout, really helps to get me to take that first step. I hope that that helped. Okay, getting back here. For craft's sake, I abstain from sugar and white flour very seriously about weight loss. Do you have any advice about that? Okay, so are you wanting to completely abstain from sugar and white flour and you're wanting to do weight loss? Okay, so it's really difficult, I find, I'm gonna do this at the same time. It's really difficult, I find, to completely cut out all sugar and all flour. That's a really difficult thing to do. Um, but what I, what I have found is that you, if you add foods, right, we add foods, into our diet that take the place of the sugar and of the flour, you're more likely to stick with that kind of diet. A diet in the typical uh, sense when you would abstain, I keep putting this, uh, I keep putting hyaluronic acid on my, on my face to do a, this treatment, but I might have to just wait. Let me just rub this in. Um, I have found that when you add foods to your diet, you add stuff like, you know, high fiber foods and you add uh, predominantly plant-based vegetables at the beginning of every meal. It's that stuff that you add and you crowd out the other stuff. So I've talked a lot um, on various talk shows, but also uh, on some content here, and I think on a live as well, in terms of how you wanna layer your food when you eat. If you start with the starchy carbs and you're starting with the sugar, or you're starting with even a juice, you're setting yourself up to spike your blood sugar level and then crash your blood sugar level. And when it crashes down below, so you you have a set point, when you eat something sugary, starchy carbs, flour, sugars, even fruit, it will spike your blood sugar level and then it will slowly come back down below that set point and it will stimulate you to, to be hungry again and you'll end up wanting to eat again. So instead of saying, I want to eliminate the starchy carbs and I, or, or flour and I want to uh, totally eliminate sugar, I think you're going to have a lot better um, result and a lot better, um, a lot more chance of sticking with this throughout the entire year. If you, I'll try to sleep, speak a little bit slower, Kaya, sorry. It's my, uh, I have so much stuff I just want to throw out there. Um, but if you, if you add these kinds of food for craft's sake, instead of concentrating on eliminating them, you're gonna have a lot better chance. So before you do any, before you have any meal or any snack, I want you to drink a full glass of water because oftentimes our bodies mistake thirst for hunger. We think that we're hungry and our body is actually just craving water especially as we age, there's something that happens in the brain, the sensor in the brain, and I forgot what the name of it was, that lets us know we're thirsty is not as sharp as it was when we were younger. So that kind of signal is, is kind of gets messed up a little bit and we think that we're hungry when we're actually thirsty. So before you reach for anything for craft's sake, drink a full glass of water. And if you can add in a fiber supplement or um, just literally any sort of vegetable prior to a meal, you're already going to keep your blood sugar level more stable, right? Because the fiber in that vegetable or in that fiber supplement is going to help to coat the inside lining of your small intestines, which will make it a lot less likely for the sugars of, of any food. It doesn't have to be a cookie. It could be, you have, there's sugars in, in every food but it will slow down the way that the sugar pulls through that small intestines, making it far less likely to be stored as fat around the midsection, but also making it far less likely for you to spike that blood sugar level, crash that blood sugar level and keep you craving for more. So I like the goal of reducing your sugar and your flours. I really, I think that that's a great goal to have. Just be careful that you're not so deprived that you're gonna sabotage your own results. So I have found in working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, my one-on-one -on -one clients, that it, to add, if we wanna add foods, add all the good foods and crowd out the bad is a lot more, um, I've, I've had a lot more success with clients for that. I, hope that. I hope that that helps. I love that goal. Let's just really make sure 
we're not stripping things down to where we're gonna freak out and end up eating, you know, a whole bag of cookies. So adding stuff, adding the fiber, adding in more vegetables, adding in a salad before you start a meal, adding in the water, you will already realize you're gonna eat a lot less sugar and a lot less flour that way. Okay, I hope that helps. I'm gonna go back up here because I know I missed another question. Do you drink alcohol? I don't, um, underscore M underscore Kaya. I did, I love my cocktails, I love my wine. I did that all through my 30s and 40s. And I just, when I started going through menopause, what I realized, well, not only that, but the more I started learning, you know, I went back to school at 50 and got a second master's degree in gerontology, which is the study of aging and the study of what happens physically to our bodies through the aging process. Um, and what I, what I realized is like, I'm a health coach, you know, I, I know that alcohol is, is a poison. It is. We can doctor it up. We can make it taste good. We can add all this stuff in to make it to where it's consumable to us. Um, but it's a poison. Let's just, that's just the facts. And so as a health coach, my, you know, and I'm not against it, anybody that drinks, you know, having a glass or two of wine at the end of, of a night, there's, there's a lot of research on the health benefit of that. Um, I think more towards the glass rather than the glass or two and the way that we're pouring it, it's just like a cup of coffee, right? You can have this cup of coffee or you could have this cup of coffee, right? So the way that we're actually pouring our servings of alcohol has gotten way bigger, just like right along with our food has gotten way bigger. So a glass of wine or a cocktail at the end of the night um, doesn't really show that it's detrimental in the long run. But when you look at it in terms of the science of what happens to the body when you drink, um, your brain is going to be much healthier without alcohol. Your waistline, your metabolic health is going to be much healthier without alcohol. You make smarter choices when you don't incorporate alcohol into your daily life. And for me, when I went through menopause in my 50s, or I'm still going through menopause in my 50s, um, I realized that even if I have one glass of wine at night, which I'm a two glass of wine person, that's just, I'm this person, you know, when I would drink, I wasn't this person because I've, I have muscle mass and my body would just metabolize the, the alcohol quicker because I, have, I had a lot of muscle mass. Um, but what I had found is that in, in the next day when I woke up, it, even if I wasn't hung over, I wasn't a hundred percent. And when I started recognizing that I wasn't a hundred percent, um, and I have a lot of stuff that I still want to do, it made cutting out the alcohol so much easier. And so the way that I started was I didn't make it a new year's resolution, but about last, so a year ago, October, not this past October, but the October before that I started making a, I made a deal with myself that I would not have alcohol at home. So I would only have alcohol, a glass of you know something or two, when I was out at a party, when I was out at a social function, when I was at a wedding, when I went out to, to drink, when I went out to eat at a restaurant. That's when I was, it was okay for me to have a, a glass or two, but not the glass or two or three while I was cooking at home. So I really um, changed that first and then once it came around to, um, when I get, when it came back around to like January, I'm like, oh, I'll do a dry January. I'm barely drinking because I'm a little bit of a homebody. I don't go out a ton. I like being at home. I love my family. I love being around, you know, just, just at home. And I have a small group of friends that I love. I'm not a big going out partier kind of person. Um, but I started that that last January. So last January is when I thought, oh, I'll have another dry January. And then I just never really picked it up. My daughter got married in August. I had one um, toast of champagne at my daughter's wedding and haven't had anything since then. So I've just found that in the morning, I wanna be 100%. I don't want, at 55 years old, I don't even want to be 90% in the morning. I need to be 100% to be able to get done everything that I want to get done. So that's a very long way to do it, to tell you. But I didn't cut cold turkey. 
I stepped down and once I stepped down and started realizing that positive feedback, you know, I started realizing, ah, oh, I feel great in the morning. My workouts are better. I, my, I started losing a little bit of weight because although you might not realize it, that, that one glass of wine, the one glass of wine at night times 30, that's how many extra calories you're getting. So if you want to, if you want to see what, um, you know, if you want to get that real connection of what you put in your body, how it shows up in your metabolism and how it shows up in your skin, give up alcohol for about three months and it'll be very apparent. You will not only lose weight, but your skin is much better. And that just lets you know, you, you kind of are what you eat, right? Okay, so um, let's see if there is anything else. I thought I missed a bunch of questions here. Okay, tell me, tell me what you're what you're wanting to work on. If you're wanting to work on alcohol, also there's that great book called um, what is it called? The Easy Way to Quit Alcohol. The Easy Way, the Easy Way to Control Your Drinking, I think is what it's called. And I did read that book, um, so I was interested in that. You're welcome. I've got to get back in the game. Holidays are killing me. Grand3.df. I am not. That is no joke. Part of the reason why I didn't do like a big teaching um, Instagram live today is because I feel like I'm still in recovery mode. You know, we've got a, a big family. Um, there was a lot of people in my family that were ill during the holidays. We had the loss of my of my nephew um, around Thanksgiving. And I feel I, I'm with you, Grana um, 3df I have not pulled myself out to be in regular functioning mode at this point. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to shake it off, trying to shake it off. I need to get back in the gym. It's been a couple days since I've been in the gym, but I wanna say too, I'm also in the process of moving into a new house. So right after this live, I'll go to the new house. Um, we'll be in this home that we're, we've been in a lease for the last couple of years. We'll be in this home until January, I think 25th is our big move day but I emptied out a big storage facility yesterday. And so that went into the new house. Exciting, exciting stuff. But I'm telling you, the stress of the holidays, along with the stress of moving and the stress of grief, like I, I haven't, I'm not back on my game yet. Um, next week though, I do have um, a doctor coming on that is talking about hormones and a new test kit, kit that we can do at home to test our hormones. Um, so that's, I am getting back in my teacher mode next Saturday, but I'm going to repeat this again tomorrow. I'm going to be doing a treatment that will go to my, subscri my subscription club, but we'll also be talking about how can I help you get back in the game. And so grana3.df, um, listen, there's a lot of things that you can do in terms of just getting back to that set point and it all starts with that first step, right? So if you're if your game normally looks like, ah, oh, normally I meditate, normally I, I get in the gym, normally I haven't got there yet, it all starts with that one step and it's setting that intention ahead of time. Laying, for me, I like to set my intention the night before. So before I go to bed, I'm like, okay, I need to ground, I need to meditate, I need to exercise, I need to do my 30 minutes of skincare, um, I've got work to do, I need to check on each kid. How, how is this gonna, how am I going to set this intention at night to get back into my game, game? And a lot of times with me, it's very, very weird, it starts with me putting my clothes out for the next day. I don't know why that is, but it's like, okay. You know, people wear many different hats, um, for me, like if when I'm looking at like my overall well-being, I'm always like in lounge clothes, always in the house. I'm always in lounge clothes, always in a tank top, always just kind of always ready to move. Um, but to set that intention of, okay, here's what my day is going to look like and set my clothes out, you know, whatever those are, um, set my clothes out. It, are, it already, I know what I'm doing in the morning. So I'll... I'll fold up my clothes, I'll set them on the side of my bathtub so that when I get out of my freezing cold shower and then I do my red light therapy and I get my sunscreen on, I know what clothes I'm putting on and boom, that already, that's my hat that I'm gonna start with. I hope that that helps, but yeah, the holidays are tough, man. They are tough. So thankful, did, did uh, you did a girl taught me so, ah, uh, yay. Okay, 
Um, listening to all the fa the fab info. Why microneedling? See, I can't. I like. I have this. I should be doing this. I should be doing my thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna um, do a little bit of microneedling tomorrow. I think when I drink alcohol, I feel like my waist area swells. However, I have some friends who drink a lot, but they are thin. What could this reason be? Inflammation happens in different places for different people. When people get inflamed, and alcohol does create chronic inflammation and inflammation is the root of all diseases. So you have to think about it this way. Can alcohol increase your likelihood of cardiovascular disease? Yes. Can it increase your likelihood of Alzheimer's? Absolutely. And dementia? Absolutely. Because any sort of inflammation like that can cause, can, can instigate um, age-related disease. So it's your inflammation is around your gut. So I'd like to look at like are you taking a probiotic? What does your microbiome in your gut look like? Your friends might have inflammation that where they get a puffy face. Either way, nobody, you can't drink alcohol and escape any of the negative side effects of that. You might be seeing it more here, but that doesn't mean your friends aren't experiencing it, right? Inflammation in the joints. There's a lot of different stuff that can happen. Um, hope that that helps. Okay, let me see, let me keep going. Maybe I should just turn this on so I can at least. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, let's see. I have a lot of different goals this um, this year. I'm really excited about them. I'm trying to get to the bottom so I could see if there was any other questions. Um, or in, I don't know what that means, Izzy05. What do you think about M-O-R-I-M-G-A. Does anybody know, is that a typo? Let me know, okay? Let me know what that means. Okay, I'm just doing a little radio frequency to tighten up this. Again, I'm a little bit behind on my schedule. So normally I, I follow my protocol, my weekly protocol, and the holidays kind of throws, it throws me off a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Travel and all of that stuff and illness, so kind of, I'm a little bit behind. So I'm doing a little radio frequency today. And I'm going to play a little bit of catch up. Let me see if there was anything else. Um, you're, mm, thank you for that. Um, which supplements do you rec for, recommend for gaining muscle mass? There are no supplements that I would recommend for gaining muscle mass. Jose, I love this question. Um, muscles are made in the gym. They're not made in the kitchen. So I am not somebody who does a high protein diet. I think that you have to have adequate amounts of protein but if, according to Harvard um, Medical, that's only 0.35 grams per pound. So it's not one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now, of course, if you're, if you're an, um, an endurance athlete or you're like a competitive athlete, if you're like in the NFL, of course you need to add more protein along with getting in the gym. But for normal people, we have so much extra protein because we've been listening to the marketing. You know, we, we go, we're on a high protein diet fad, you guys. And if you missed that live show that I did on that high protein diet fad, um, I'll make sure that I put that in the, I'll try to put that in the highlights so that you guys can go back and watch that. But we're only supposed to have 0.35, so about a third of the protein that we keep pushing into our bodies when you're drink, when you're eating these supplements and worried about getting mass amounts of protein. We're supposed to have a third of that. Guess what extra protein gets stored as? Fat. Right around here. Extra protein does not get stored in your muscles. Extra protein gets stored as fat, just like extra anything gets stored as fat. So when you're doing stuff like you're lifting weights, um, Modere Collagen makes a sport. I love that. And so after I get done lifting weights, I don't go and consume mass amounts of protein because I want my body to reach into its own protein sources, the damaged proteins that we have that accumulate in our brains and throughout our bodies become senescent cell or zombie cells. And those are really, really bad to have and can accumulate in our bodies. And so when in times of deprivation of protein, not deprivation, but in times of low protein, when our body needs it, we go and we pick apart those cells. I want this part and this part and this part. And now let's get rid of that damaged protein and I can utilize these. So after a workout, I don't have mass amounts of protein. I'm still, um, I'm still 
basically fasting after my workout. So I'll have a couple of teaspoons, a couple of tablespoons of the Modera Collagen Sport, which helps with muscle recovery, but it has collagen in it, so it's helping with all of that stuff. I'll have a cup of mushroom coffee, but I'm still going to eat a predominant, pred predominantly, oh my god, a predominantly plant-based major meal after my workout. Um, I'll have a little bit of meat sometimes or tofu or stuff like that from high India, but I am not one that has protein powders in my, my cupboard. I don't believe in that at all. I am 55. Um, thank you for that. Okay, hold on. Uh, and I have no makeup on. Oh, I have a little bit of, I have mascara. I have some mascara on, um, but I, cause I want to do this for my face. So yes, um, I used to do that and I started to do cold showers as much as I can stand with arthritis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, cold showers. I'm telling you guys, if you want to, if you want to boost your mood and boost your metabolism, jump in a freezing cold shower for two, for two minutes. I need to do a live on deliberate cold exposure because when this is a good thing as well, you guys to add into 2024, start your day the right way. Right. And somebody had said like, you know, how do you, if I need to work out in the morning, how do I do that? Um, Morinaga. Moringa. I have to write this down. Does anybody know? Um, I don't know what this is, Lizzie. Sorry, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to look it up after. Moringa. You want to explain it a little bit better? Um, such a be such beautiful skin. Oh, thank you so much. Um, you want to explain it a little bit better? Let's see if there was any such beautiful skin you have. That's so beautiful and nice to say. Okay, so we should consume about a third protein a day. Um, lazy 18, I think you won something. I forgot what it was that you won. Did you win the, let me know what you won lazy 18. Cause I know you won something. Did you win the prolon fast? I don't remember. Um, okay. So what you should consume lazy 18 is take your body weight. Let's say I'm a hundred. I don't have my calculator, but I'm 110 pounds. Okay. I'm actually like 107, but whatever. If I were to do a 0.35, grams of protein that's not, that per, per per pound that i have in other words you're not going to eat the same amount of protein as your friend right it depends on what your size is this makes sense right what your size is um how much muscle mass you have do you lift weights because muscles will suck in some protein there how much are how active are you are you an endurance athlete um, and do you want to live a long time? Because if you are going to consume mass amounts of protein and then get in the gym and bulk up, you, you're going to, you're exchanging the, the muscle mass for longevity. And I know that this is going to be controversial that I say this, but that's what the research is showing. Okay. I would rather make my muscles in the gym, step back from, from, just mass amounts of protein, make my muscles in the gym, make sure that I'm having my 0 0.35. I normally have like 0 0.33 to 0.35 grams of protein per pound. I'm less than 40 grams of protein per day, you guys. Less than 40 grams. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to flex, but I have muscle mass, right? I have muscle mass and I'm not buying into the marketing of, of mass amounts of protein, because that is people making money off of our unhealthiness. That's people making money off of us not living as long. What I try to do here is cut through all that BS of marketing and let you know what is the science really showing you. Harvard Medical is saying 0.35 grams of protein per body pound. If you look at the longevity scientists like Dr. Walter Longo at USC, who's the head of longevity center at USC, you guys know I graduated from USC, He's saying a 0.33, so it's a little bit less. And the reason for that is autophagy. We want our body to go into the damaged cells, pick them apart for, 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 you know, for parts, add the other proteins that we have, and get rid of those. And that's what's going to help us live longer. So you got to think of it this way. Anytime that there's been anything that... that marketers and big business can make money on, they're going to make money on it. Nobody should have a protein bar in their kitchen right now. It's a glorified candy bar. And if you look at it like that, yeah, Lazy 18, you won the Prolon fast. 
I don't think I sent that to you. You need to get me your address, okay? Please DM me after this. It's the holidays have been a real shit show. <laughs> like, you know, there's so, but please DM me your, please DM me your address, Lazy18, and let me get that in the mail to you. Because I do have that, that one here. I need to physically go put it in the mail for you. But yeah, that's my whole thing about the supplements for, um, for muscle. The supplement, there's no supplements for muscle. Just eat. Eat regular. Eat like you regularly do. Hopefully it's predominantly plant-based. Hopefully it's small amounts of meats. Um, and, and really lean proteins, and then you make your muscles in the gym. They're gonna get as big as the effort you put in, right? Don't keep accumulating power bars and protein supplements and all of this other stuff unless you're a competitive athlete because if you're not making those muscles in the gym, you can't just eat protein and all of a sudden it's gonna go whoop. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. That excess protein is gonna be stored as fat. And it does nothing to help with those zombie cells to, to get rid of those. So it's in times of deprivation, depriving yourself a little bit of protein will help you live longer. And um, yeah, it's going to help you live longer and healthier. That's it. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, but yeah, that's how there's that formula. Oh, I really love mention me, please. <laughs> Blue periwink. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Um, facial bone anti-aging tips. Yeah. So when we lose, yes, that's a great, actually, that's a great question. Sri, um, Pirani CR7. Um, when we age, we lose bone, right? So just think about it. Like when, when we, when you age, you lose, you lose your, your bone density, right? So our bones become, they have these little holes in them. So it's like a sarcopenia, um, you'll lose your muscle mass, and but you'll also lose some bone mass. And the way to help combat that is you need a really good K2 um, D3 supplement. Now, that is a supplement that I think everybody should be on because what that does is it helps to direct the calcium that we have out of the arteries and into the bone so that your bones become denser. Does that make sense? So yeah, just like we have to do weight-bearing exercises um, in order to help with bone density, we also need to make sure that when we're adding things like calcium to our diets or um, you know things that help our bones be strong, that we're making sure that we're not directing those into our, our, our blood vessels that we're actually taking them out of the blood vessels and, and making sure they're directed into the bone. When we age as well, we're losing our facial, our bones for our cheeks, right? That's why, that's a lot of the part that happens with aging too. You know, you guys, I have done this, um, I've done this, I'm a, not a great job, but I've done this circle of, wow, that's not really symmetrical, None of us are symmetrical. Our faces are formed in the womb like this, not the other way around. So if you're chasing symmetry on your face, you're going to be chasing that forever. I suggest you give that up. Um, but when we our, our face looks like this, like an upside down egg, right? Um, and then as we age, it flips over and we get a loss of the bone in the cheeks, right? We get a loss of the bone in the cheeks which then has everything sag and we get the jowl area around here, right? So we get a loss of fat in the temple. We get a loss of fat under the eye. We get a loss of fat under the eye. We get a loss of bone here, which then drops everything. So <laughs> when you're doing weight bearing exercises, you are increasing your bone density, but you also want to make sure you're, do, you're taking a supplement like a, 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 a K2 D3 and K2 is important because that's the thing that really helps to direct into the bones so that your bones don't become so dense. I do have my own supplement line, my Live Young Healthy Aging supplement line. If you are interested in that, just DM me the word supplements and that will go bring you right to that website. Um, but I, that is a, a key, key supplement when you're talking about losing um, facial bone as well. Okay. Right now, I think through the new year's, if you put holiday 20, oh, young holiday 20, young holiday 20 on my, for the supplements, you'll get 20% off so that it's the K2D3 that's important with the bone loss and you lose facial bone as well. You guys, 
Okay, so let's see. Did I miss anything? I'm sure I did. Um, okay, so I'm going to write down this other person's. This is, um, if you're not here to learn anything or, you know, be supportive, you're just like really... It's, it's you're really kind of just cutting down the experience for everybody else. So I will, Gunners SFT underscore 23, block you after this. Sorry. But come on. You, listen to what I'm saying um, instead of, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Just like, come on. Does that ever work? Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. Um, let's see if there's any. What's the best plant protein? Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Um... Jenny Carl makeup, great makeup artist, Jenny Carl. Um, okay, so I like if you're doing a plant protein, there's a lot of, I mean, there's so much protein. I had a list, I don't know what I did with it. I think it's downstairs of the top 10 thing, 10 uh, foods that have uh, protein in them. Of course, if you could always do tofu. I'm not one that is in into this, like, let's make tofu into a bunch of different stuff. No, I think it's ridiculous. Um, I think that that's when you start getting some some issues. But if you're just having like tofu with stir fry vegetables, amazing. Um, garbanzo beans are amazing. You can just take a can of garbanzo beans, rinse those, stick them in a salad. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can get um, some protein. There's a pea protein, which I used to do this. And now because I'm on a low protein diet, I don't. But if you're somebody who you know, you're a little bit deprived of protein, which ask your doctor when was the last time that anybody had to be treated for inadequate protein in America. <laughs> inadequate fiber, for sure. Um, inadequate nutrients, um, because our foods are not as nutrient dense as they once were, or you might just be eating a bunch of junk food. But inadequate protein is really hard to find in America because all you have to do is eat. So Jenny, if you're just eating a plant-based diet and you're having nuts and seeds, like I eat a lot of almonds, I eat a lot of walnuts, I eat a lot of sunflower seeds, you can sprinkle those on salads or anything like that, chia seeds, anything like that. I just, I eat a lot of seeds and a lot of nuts um, and I eat a lot of tofu, yeah. Um, there is a pea protein powder uh, by Sun Warrior vanilla flavored that I used to use. And in times where it's like, I know that I'm not going to be even close to near my home for that day. And it's going to be difficult for me to find, um, you know, what I, what I feel like I need to eat. I will put a couple of scoops of that pea protein into just some, like some water and maybe even some athletic greens and shake that up and have that, but it's it's rare that I do that anymore. Um, it's rare that I do that anymore because proteins, again, are made in the gym. I mean, muscles are made in the gym. They're not made in the kitchen. I have the mushroom coffee price. Please send it out. I did get you, oh, for craft's sake. For craft's sake, um, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, you guys be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit, I'm, I'm just, on, I'm behind, I'm behind. I'm behind them. Just a little bit of patience, but I do have those. In fact, you know what? I have it right here. Shit. For craft's sake, I'm going to try to get this to you on Monday, okay? And there were a couple of others that I have their addresses down. Um, if I, if you have not received your mushroom coffee and you were a winner, just reach out to me again. Get me your address. I'm going to get it in the mail. Oh, thank you. Um, so, okay. I will get that in the mail to you. Okay. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. So what are some of what are some of the things that you guys want to accomplish this year? What are the, some of the things? Because I'm, I'm here to help you. You want to lose weight? I want to help you. You want to start eating better? I want to help you. You want to get your skin looking the best it's ever been? I want to help you. So let me know um, what you guys are wanting to, to accomplish. It's almost, I have like 10 minutes here. And since I'm not doing like a lecture, then, you know, we can just chat. Um, let's see, does everybody have, I could just do this till I see it. Let me do a little bit of radio frequency till I see a question come up. I'm going to be here again tomorrow. I'm probably going to do microneedling. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what can you share about, hold on. What can you share about fat deposit? 
Tell me what you mean about that. Like when you, when you eat where your fat gets deposited um, is partially genetic based on your number of fat cells in that location. What can help me not to crave sugar? I actually have a product called Crave Control. That's a really good question. Um, Walter Mitty Murphy, I love that. Um, that's a really good question because we are so bombarded with so much sugar and all kinds of shit. Um, so the way, the, the good, hold on, let me get this going. So how do you not crave sugar? I've always said like you, you want to start the, you want to, when you're craving sugar, okay, let me just, blah, blah, let me start over. When you're craving sugar, I want you to look at the meal you had prior to that. Okay. Because sometimes we set ourselves up. We sabotage our own diets by what we're eating. We think we're eating healthy. And what we're doing is we're spiking our blood glucose level. We're crashing our blood glucose level. And when our blood glucose levels crashes, guess what we are craving? Sugar. We want that sugar quick and our bodies are, are right to crave, crave that because we're depleted. So when we eat something that's a starchy carb or a sugar or we're drinking a juice, oh my God, don't ever drink juice, you guys. When we're drinking a juice or we're drinking a smoothie, we pulverized all that fruit up into like a mush. We're not using our teeth anymore. We're just sucking it down into our stomach as quickly as possible. It's overload for our whole system. And so when you look at what you ate two hours ago and wonder, what are you, why are you craving so much sugar? Look at what you ate two hours ago and try to do the, not the math, but try to do the logic of, ah, that felt good at the time. Those potatoes felt good at the time. That mac and cheese felt good at the time, right? Those potato chips felt good at the time. Um, but what that did was it spiked your blood glucose level and then crashed your blood glucose level, and now you're craving the sugar. So to stop craving the sugar, you need to look at what you ate two hours ago, two or three hours ago, and stop that glucose roller coaster, right? And the best way to do that is, I do have a Crave Control, so um, if, you, if you want that Crave Control link, just DM me supplements. Again, use Young Holiday 20 for 20% 20 off, but it does help to reduce that but fiber is our friend. So if we're, if you are, <laughs> thanks Walter Murphy, I'm glad. Sometimes there's like bing, 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 bing. Okay, that makes sense. And once it makes sense, you're gonna be far more likely to follow it. When you're eating your meal, this goes back to like how you layer your meal. When you're eating your meal, you want, start with water, then start, then fiber. Water and fiber, okay? And fiber is not in, in potato chips. Fiber is not in, in sugar, fi in a in you know a, a cookie, fiber is in vegetables. All fiber comes from vegetables. Doesn't come from meat. It is the structural part of vegetables. Fiber is our friend. So if you eat more fiber, um, I'm, it was Minnie Murphy or Murphy Minnie. I forgot. Um, but if you eat more fiber in the beginning, you're slowing down the way that that sugar hits your bloodstream. You're going to be far less likely to spike your blood glucose far less likely to crash it and then crave that sugar again. So start looking at that. And then when you're craving the sugar, also think, am I craving sugar? Am I bored? Is it something I ate two hours ago? Am I thirsty? Am I tired? Am I stressed? Because all of those reasons will make you reach for sugar. All of those reasons will make you reach for sugar because sugar is a feel good show. It's feel good, right? It's like a drug. It feels good. It, we think that it solves everything because it does in that moment. It feels good. You know, serotonin, dopamine's going like crazy. We think that it feels good and then it's just this roller coaster that we have to get off of. So fiber is your friend. Start with fiber. Walter Mitty Murphy, glad I could help. Okay, let's see, was there was some other thing? What are your thoughts on myoacetal and selenium supplements? Selenium is great for the skin. Um, it's in my, my healthy aging vitamins in, the, in my Nutramax, which is like the daily vitamin. Those are in, in those as well. It's great for longevity and for the skin. So it's just really difficult, I have found, to find really great supplements that aren't full of toxins and heavy metals and um, that actually do what they're what they say that they're that they are supposed to do. So that's my problem with the whole supplement industry, especially here in America. It's very loosely um, 
It's very loosely regulated, meaning that the FDA will take things off the market that are um, blatantly harming us and that blatantly are lies that don't do what they're doing. But there's so much. Um, oh, thank you for that badge. Oh, that's so sweet. Izzy, thank you so much. Um, Izzy, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Um, but Oh God, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, the, the supplements. There's, you know, our FDA, it's not that our FDA doesn't do anything. It does. They're just overworked and there's only so many things that they can do. And supplements are not, um, they're not necessity, right? So there's a lot looser regulation on that. And so to get something that's bioavailable that your body actually uses, it's hard to find that on the shelf at CVS. It just is. It's hard to find that. So if you want... Those, um, but that's it. But selenium is great. Selenium is great. You can also get that from Brazil nuts, right? Like one Brazil nut, I think, gives you your daily intake of selenium. How crazy is that? Food is a miracle. The right food is a miracle, and the wrong food is poison, right? The wrong food is poison and will really kind of get you on that roller coaster. But the right food, like it just to be able to eat a Brazil nut and have all the selenium that you need, that's like. You can't get any better than that. You can't get any better than that. Okay. Let's see if I missed anything. Um, can red light, ooh, let's see. Can red light, can I do red light after microneedling? I suggest doing red light after microneedling. So if you guys don't have my, my protocol, this is my weekly protocol on how I fit in, and I swear I'm gonna get to this today, <laughs> but how I fit in all my, my skincare treatments in less than 30 minutes a day because skin is our largest organ. Um, it not only does our skin tell a lot about our internal health, like if you're optimally healthy and you're, you've got, you're eating nutrient dense food and you're sleeping well and you're moving, you're exercising, you're stress reducing, you're doing all of these things, it's going to shine through your skin, right? People often, when I, when I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, and if you don't want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, listen, you think you learn a lot here, wait till I get you one-on-one. -on -one because I give you like a full protocol. I don't have it here, but I don't, and I'm too lazy to get up, sorry. But <laughs> I give you a full protocol, pages and pages of, of clickable links on what you can do um, and how to get you on that trajectory. But if you wanna work one-on-one -on -one with me, just DM me the word consult and it'll, I'll send you my Calendly and you can book a, a consult there. But um, this whole protocol of getting 30 minutes a day in on your skin is super important for healthy aging. This is my inside out. All the good stuff that you're doing inside your body shines through your skin and the outside in, all the stuff that we do on the outside of our skin, which is our largest organ, which is associated with our self-esteem. It's our only outward facing organ. This makes you feel better. This makes you look better. So you approach skincare from the inside out and optimal health and healthy aging from the inside out but also from the outside in, because if you've ever had a good hair day, you know that that changes what you do with the day, right? If, I, if my skin is looking great and, I'm, and I've been exercising, I'm watching what I'm eating and I'm like, ooh, I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now, liking what I look like in the mirror, it changes what you do with that day. You're far less likely to plop your ass on the couch with a bag of, of Doritos or a pint of Ben and Jerry's if you're feeling good and you're looking good, right? And, and I mean to you, compared to you, not compared to everybody else, but you, you know if your skin is looking good today. You know what you, how you feel. If you feel like I'm at the, I'm at a really good weight right now, right? For you, you know, that changes what you do with the day. And so that outside stuff is important as well. In a prior show, you mentioned the fat procedure. Are you talking about fat transfer? You're talking about fat transfer? In terms of the, let me get back to the red light. In terms of my protocol, sorry, I kind of like went, that question was answered like this, but in terms of my protocol, when I do microneedling, I'm, I do red light therapy right afterwards. Now, I might use my big panel because I don't want the mask all the way. Uh, I don't know what I do with my mask, it's over there. I don't want the mask all the way against my face when I, when I have ablated my face, when I've um, caused trauma on the outside of my face with a microneedling pen. So if I've done a microneedling pen and did a, a thing, I wanna make sure that my red light therapy is kind of a, away from my face a little bit, just on day one, okay, just on day one. And then on day two, I'm wearing the mask, so it's touching my face. 
on day three and four, I'm, I'm doubling up on my collagen and I'm doubling up on my red light therapy. So after microneedling, red light therapy is great because red light therapy helps wound healing. It's used in space, you guys, by astronauts to heal wounds. Um, how do you receive your protocol sheet? DM me the word protocol. Now listen, when you DM me the word protocol, immediately go to your spam mail. It will be sitting there within five or 10 minutes. If you wait, it's gonna be lost into your spam. You're gonna DM me saying, I never received it. I'm gonna say, yes, you did. It's automated, look in your spam mail, blah, 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 blah. Just check your spam mail right away. Um, is using progesterone cream good for anti-aging? Using any sort of hormones that gets your hormone levels back to where they were when you were in your youth. And by your youth, I mean like 30. When, you were, when your hormones were working their best, they're like in their 30s, right? So if you, when, you're, when your hormones start dipping in midlife, which I'm 55, my hormones have been there and done that and they have dipped. So um, when you're doing something like when your hormones are dipping to add in, make sure you're going to a doctor, but to add in estrogen, which dips with age, progesterone, which dips with age, DHEA, which dips with age, testosterone, which dips with age, getting a full thyroid panel, which dips with age. All of these things are super, super important for longevity. Now, you'll have to talk to your doctor. There's antiquated studies. Um, that were done wrong, uh, the, the Women's Health Initiative in terms of hormone replacement therapy, which was not, which the, all of those results have now been retracted. Um, hormone replacement therapy will actually help protect your bones and in, in, it will help your bones to not become frail. So osteoporosis, it will also help with, your, with decreasing your chances of Alzheimer's disease. Um, and it will also help reduce your, your risk of heart attack. So when we go through menopause, 50% of women will die from a heart attack after menopause. 50% of women, and I repeat that, 50% of women post menopause will die from a heart attack. So is does estrogen protect your heart? Do these hormones that come out of balance um, protect your heart and your bones and your brain? Absolutely, absolutely they do. That was a very way to answer that question. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. My gosh. Oh, some people on here. No, I'm very happily married. I have the best husband in the world. Um, so Jennifer, when you um, put protocol here, afterwards when I post this to my main feed, put it in the comment section of my main feed or you can just send me a, D, a direct message that says protocol. But when I post this to my main feed, which I do every Saturday, tomorrow I won't. Tomorrow's gonna go only to my subscription club. I'm gonna go back to posting my demos on Sunday to my, my subscription club. But today, this is gonna go to my main feed. When that happens, just put on the comment section, protocol, and a link will automatically be sent to you in your DMs. When you click on that link, please check your spam mail right away, okay? Um, and that'll be sitting there right in your box. Okay, is there anything else, you guys? It's 12.01, I'm gonna be back here tomorrow. Microneedling something. You're very fit, thank you. Um, do you prefer I DM you? Yes. Uh, yeah, just DM me, uh, Jeanette, DM me and, or, or yeah, DM me and then I'll give you my cell phone. What is the protein calculation of grams per day? 0.35. Harvard says 0.35 grams of protein, not one gram of protein per body pound. That would be crazy. I'd have 107 grams of protein, 108 grams, anywhere from there, 107, 110. That's about where I am. I'm a very small person, you guys. That's not to compare anything. My bones are tiny. I wear a size five shoe. I'm a very small person. So my weight is not your weight, right? Can I microneedle my neck? I suggest you do, Tiffany. Um, it's on my schedule. So if you have the protocol, I microneedle every Sunday and I oscillate between my face, um, my abdomen, my neck and chest, my knees, sometimes I'll throw in the back of my arms, sometimes I'll do my hands. You know where you can microneedle? 
everywhere you feel you have crepey skin and anytime you want to improve the look and feel and function of your skin. Because when you're microneedling, what you're doing is you're not only improving the look, but you're inc improving the function of your skin because you're creating little micro traumas. Call on your body to increase the collagen production, right? So this is increasing the function of your skin. Your, fun your skin is behaving more like it did when it was younger when you were doing that, when you're microneedling, okay? Um, let's see, does the regimen reverse the signs of aging or just prevent? It Listen, for those of you, any, all of you guys here, for those of you who have been doing this a while, for craft's sake, you've been doing this a while for me. What did you feel after your first microneedling session? Did you feel that your skin looked a little bit better? I mean, it's two weeks after. Did your skin look a little bit better, right? We're not just holding steady with these types of treatments. We're improving the function of our skin. And in improving the function of your skin, you're gonna improve the look of your skin. Okay, does that make sense? All right, I'm gonna get off of here, you guys. I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna microneedle my face tomorrow, I think. I think I'm out, I have to look at my calendar to see like where I am in that because the holidays kind of screwed, screwed me up. But I'll see you guys tomorrow and tomorrow we will have the winner for the Blue Dot Pillow and my Neuromax Magnesium supplement that literally crosses the blood brain barrier and helps with uh, prevention of Alzheimer's. So anyways, have a great day. Bye, Izzy. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Okay.